What is going on my friends? Hank here from Spruce and Brews Scale Modeling. And today we're talking all about what not to do if you're just getting started in the hobby of plastic model building. We're going to cover five common beginner mistakes that I learned the hard way so you don't have to. As with anything, scale modeling is a hobby of live and learn, but hopefully I can share a few tips with you guys from my own personal experience to save you a little bit of trouble. Be sure to stick around until the end of the video for what I think might be the single biggest mistake that beginner scale modelers make and my suggestions on how to avoid it. With that all said, let's hop right into mistake number one. Alrighty, so the first mistake that I often see folks make that are just getting into the hobby of scale modeling actually happens before they even start building. If you started looking around online a bit for a kit to order for yourself, you've probably noticed that there are tons of scale model brands out there nowadays. And not all scale model brands are made alike. Not even all models from a single brand are made alike. And what I mean by that is one model from, let's say, Tamiya might be very complex, while another one of their kits might be quite simpler and a lot easier to build and paint. So the first, and in many ways, the most crucial mistake I see new builders making is not doing their research before buying a kit. Scale modeling is a wonderful hobby, and it's one that you can really grow into and develop your skills over the years. But if you start out with your first kit and it's a real challenge, you might get discouraged and quit. And that's not what we want, of course. It's so important to make sure that your first ever model kit, or even your first few model kits, are good kits for beginners. What makes a good kit for beginners? Well. I'd recommend checking out my best kits for beginners video, which I'll link to right here. But essentially, a good beginner kit is well engineered, it doesn't have a ton of parts, and it's going to be relatively straightforward to paint. It's also super important that it's a subject that you're invested in so that you stay motivated. So what I'd recommend doing if you're just starting out is watch some best beginner kits videos right here on YouTube. Watch mine, watch other builders videos, just whatever works, get some inspiration for yourself. And beyond that is a fantastic resource called scalemates.com. You can go onto scalemates, type in the name of a kit that you might be eyeing online somewhere, and you can check out the instruction manual before you even order the model. So say you were looking at Tamiya's M4A3 E8 Easy 8, for example. You just type in Tamiya Easy 8, match the box art, and then scroll down to instructions. And there you can get an idea of just how complicated the model will be to build. Scalemates is a super helpful resource. I check it out before I buy literally any kit to this day, and it's a great tool to have in your back pocket, so to speak. So don't make mistake number one. Do your research before you buy a kit. I promise it'll be worth it. Moving on to mistake number two, and this one is a real doozy. So you've gotten yourself a kit, you've opened it up, instruction manual is out, and you're ready to start building. Every single plastic part that you're gonna be using to build this model is gonna be attached to one of many sprues. That's what these little frames are called, sprues, like sprues and brews. And to use the parts, you're gonna to have to remove them one at a time as they're called for in the instruction manual. And here is where we see mistake number two. Do not, I swear, do not twist the pieces to get them off the sprue. I'm gonna demonstrate this once and it's really gonna pain me. All right, I've got an old, old set here. I'm gonna twist this off. Oh, Yeesh. that was awful. Now, technically this works. The piece is off the sprue. But there's a bunch of like leftover mess on here. Bad. The part is damaged and it just is bad. Don't do this. There is one proper way to remove pieces from a sprue. And to do this, you need to make a very small investment in what's called a sprue snipper or a sprue cutter. So take a look at this. Here's mine right here. These are gonna cost you anywhere between five and $10. I've been using this one set right here for the last seven years or so, and it's been great the whole time. I'll put a link for it in the description below if you'd like to check it out. And the proper way to remove parts with one of these, you're gonna pick a part. So we'll just do this arm right here for consistency. Get the cutting head up nice and close, and whoop, just like that, your piece is off. There's only gonna be a tiny little bit of cleanup on the cut mark here that you need to clean up with some sandpaper, and then you're ready to rock and roll. So that is mistake number two. Do not twist parts off the sprue. It makes me cringe just thinking about it. Eh. All right, on to mistake number three. So we've got our kit, we've got our sprue snippers, we're taking pieces off the sprue, awesome. We're all moving along nicely here. The next logical step, we need to glue our pieces together, right? We've gotta actually build this thing. Well, fun fact, when you're assembling plastic models, you don't actually use glue. It's basically glue, but it's called plastic cement. This is a chemical bonding agent that actually melts the plastic a bit and creates a nice strong bond between the two pieces you're joining together. Plastic cement doesn't work on other surfaces, so unlike super glue or PVA glue, like Elmer's glue, you can't use it to stick anything together other than soft plastic. 
And when I was growing up, testers plastic cement, like these guys right here, were the be all end all of plastic bottle cement, as far as I was concerned at least. It's a little tube, like of toothpaste, and you just squeeze out the plastic cement as you need it. Now, no knock against testers, they paved the way for a lot of scale modelers like myself, but it is 2023, there are much better options out there for plastic cement nowadays. So mistake number three today is using plastic cement out of a tube. This stuff kind of sucks. It makes a colossal mess of your parts, it's super difficult to control, and you're just not gonna have a great time with it, trust me. I didn't know any better when I first started out, but now you can. So this right here is Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, and this is the stuff that you need. You can get one of these bottles online for around 10 bucks, and it's gonna last you many, many models if you take care of it. You can see here it's just a clear liquid, and if you unscrew this top, you get this really nice fine tip applicator brush. And this is gonna give you so much more control with what you're cementing so you're not making a big goopy mess. It doesn't really smell and it stores super well. So mistake number three is using plastic cement out of a tube, or really any regular glues that aren't designed for plastic modeling. Now some things like resin or metal photo etch parts will require super glue down the road, but for a true beginner, you're only gonna need a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. I'm not sponsored by these guys or anything, of course, but this is the industry standard for plastic cement. This is the good stuff. All right, on to mistake number four. We're getting right through it now. So you've built up your whole model. It's looking great. And you've gotten some paint on there. It's starting to look like the real deal. Awesome. And now it's time for decals. Almost all scale models come with what's called water slide decals. And these are all the fine markings that go on your vehicle that are a little too complicated to paint by hand. So think of the stars or crosses on a tank model or all the unit markings on an aircraft, for example. I won't go into all the details of how to apply decals today. We'll save that for another video. You can check out this one right here for a little walkthrough if you'd like. But right before we put on our decals is where we come to mistake number four. And that is not using a clear coat or a varnish coat. Now, most model kit instructions will have some sort of paint guide to tell you which parts need to be painted which colors, etc. But what they don't tell you is when to apply clear coats. A clear coat is exactly what it sounds like. It's a clear coat of paint. And these clear coats are formulated to have various different finishes. Some of them are really shiny or glossy, and some of them are really flat or matte. And what they do is help protect your work and prepare your work for further steps in the modeling process. So what I often see people doing when they're first starting out is they paint up their model and then they immediately just put the decals right on the paint. And technically this will work, but it's often gonna give you a not so nice result. If decals have any air trapped under them between the decal and the paint, they do something called silvering. And if you've ever seen a model where the decals look kind of shiny and gray in some pieces, that's silvering. And to avoid this, we want to apply a clear coat after we paint and before we apply our decals. In particular, a gloss clear coat. This is going to provide a great surface for the decals to settle into and help avoid any silvering, and it's going to avoid causing any discoloration to your paintwork. If you have an airbrush, I like to use this stuff right here. This is AK Interactive Intermediate Gauzy Agent. But if you don't, and I didn't for my first few models, you can use a gloss coat that comes out of a disposable spray can. I'll add some links in the description below for options to test out if you'd like. You can just spray your whole model with this clear coat, let it dry, and then apply your decals. Once the decals have dried completely, you can spray on another gloss coat, and boom, those decals are gonna be nice and protected and have gone on super smoothly. And depending on the finished look you want for your model, I like to spray my kits with a flat or a matte clear coat at the end to knock down the extra shininess and make them a little more real. So that is mistake number four, not clear coating your models, particularly before decaling. It's a super easy one to forget, especially when you're just getting started, but now you know. All right, mistake number five. We made it, our final mistake commonly made by beginner scale modelers. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this is a big one, and this can be a real problem and a bad habit to develop as a scale modeler, especially when you're just getting started. Now, when I say this next part, I don't wanna sound like an old geezer, but I'm going to a little bit, so stick with me. Almost everything in our world today is fast. Ordering food is fast, buying things online is fast, learning something on YouTube is fast, you're doing it right now. A quick, however long this video ends up being video with some scale modeling tips. So it can be easy to get into an expectation of instant gratification. I fall for this myself all the time. I might have an idea for a project I wanna work on, I order a model kit, and boom, it's sitting at my door in a few days. Scale modeling, however, is inherently not fast. This hobby, when it's at its best, is slow. It's methodical, it's artistic. 
When you're building a scale model, if you want to get the best result and get the most enjoyment out of making it, you need to go slow. Take your time, enjoy the process. Enjoy the build, enjoy the painting. And if you take your time, you're going to avoid making silly mistakes. Our final mistake today, mistake number five, is rushing when you're working on a scale model. I have found myself over the years getting to a point where I've been working on a kit for a few hours and think to myself, all right, I'm just going to finish XYZ parts and then I'm going to stop for the day. And then I'll be cruising along trying to reach that goal. And sometimes when I do that, I'm more focused on reaching the finish line, reaching that goal that I set for myself, than I am on enjoying the build and enjoying the little details of the step that I'm working on. And when that happens, that's when you're most likely to make a mistake. This could be something small, like a bad cut of a part, or it could be something really noticeable, like a sloppy paint job. So here is my hint to you, my final little tip for you beginners out there, is when you have that feeling, the I just want to get one more little thing done feeling, stop. Put the model away, put it somewhere safe, take a break. It's not going anywhere. And then come back to it later. I promise you're going to do better work, you're going to have a better experience if you take that break. Scale modeling is a labor of love and it's so worth it in the end when you take your time and you do it right. So those are five of the most common mistakes that I see beginner scale modelers making and my tips on how to avoid them. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you want to check out some of my other beginner tutorial videos, you can do so right here. And until next time, my friends, be well, happy building. Cheers.